The Dutch Republic is one of the places where the modern world got started. That's because a robust middle class, bakers, shopkeepers, skilled artisans, along with wealthy investors, gained sufficient political and economic power to become the dominant force in the making of their society and culture. They created a golden age of Dutch painting because they spent money on art that catered to their desires, to their lives, to who they felt themselves to be. What did Dutch viewers desire from their paintings? They desired paintings that celebrated their ordinary domestic life, such as still life paintings, that gave illusionistic reproductions of the luxury tableware they were proud to own, the delicious foods imported from distant lands, such as citrus and olives. They liked paintings that celebrated the pleasures they could enjoy from their hard work and crafty commercial know-how. The Dutch enjoyed landscape paintings that idealized their homeland as a reflection of their own day-to-day -day lives and their successful industriousness. For them, the view of the vast open sky would be even more beautiful because of the linens spread on the ground, those well-made commodities that generated wealth that allowed them to reclaim land from the sea, construct windmills, and build cities like Harlem. In fact, the Dutch Republic, like much of Europe, was undergoing a massive wave of urbanization during the 1600s. In the province of Holland, with major cities such as Amsterdam, Harlem, Leiden, The Hague, as much as 70% of the population lived in cities and towns rather than the countryside. This too is a sign of the modern world taking shape. Modernity is an urban phenomenon. These urban dwellers delighted in genre paintings, a term that means paintings of everyday life, such as these friends hanging out smoking at a tavern. The painter pictured himself at the center blowing smoke rings. Beside him, his friend Jan de Helm, a still life painter, is leaning in with a laugh because this is a painting that's meant to amuse you, showing the comedy of drunken foolishness. Courtship was a favorite subject for genre painting, often with comic flair, as in this awkward moment when the young man comes to call on his date, opening the door, the father in the background looks suspicious while the girl strums a lute, a common symbol for love. Will their feelings harmonize like musical notes? The mother stands guard in front of her daughter, hands clasped, she looks none too easy to please. It's important to understand by th that by this point in Europe's artistic cultural evolution, there was a clear hierarchy of status for different genres of painting. Still life paintings and landscapes were considered the lowest status. The idea was they didn't require much more than direct observation of the world. Portraits and genre painting were in the middle since they in involved depictions of human beings and events. The highest status, the highest esteem, went to history paintings, as they were called. History painting, a painting that tells a story. This could be a biblical subject or a story from the classical past. In either case, the idea was these kinds of paintings provided a moral lesson. They elevated the minds of the viewers as the viewer involved themselves in the meaning of the story. Yet in the Dutch Republic, these so-called lower genres often received accolades and could earn a very high price. That's because the art market in the Netherlands fostered a broad-minded curiosity. And the middle-class buyers were interested in being amused, entertained, pleasured, surprised by artworks they bought, not only in edification. Moreover, some of the greatest artists working for the Dutch market elevated the humble portrait and genre painting into a wondrous achievement. Rembrandt and Vermeer could take an ordinary portrait or genre scene and make it utterly extraordinary, freighted with spiritual and intellectual gravity and lifted by the grace of their painting ability.